Hello and welcome to a Paladin's Guide to Elemental Shamans. My name is Falcon and today I'm going to be talking about the talents, glyphs, and the abilities that you will use as an Elemental Shaman to level 280. First and foremost, please note that I am not an expert at this class. I play a Paladin as my main and I have a lot of dabbling knowledge in the various specs on live. And I try to bring you a constructive look at what you'll be looking at. So let's go ahead and jump right into the talents at level 15. We pick up Stone Bulwark Totem. It is on a one minute cooldown, and it summons an Earth Totem with five health at your feet for 30 seconds and grants a shield absorbing 16,000 damage up to an additional five, five-ish percent every five seconds thereafter. Not great, but it's a pretty decent totem. Also note that all totems are situational now, and not really any passive abilities with them, except say maybe your searing totem being a passive dot, but not the point, let's move on. At level 30 we pick up Windwalker Totem. This gives you a slight ability to not get snared or anything of the sort. Possibly not the best thing for leveling. But it's the one I like the most. It's on a one minute cooldown. And it's pretty effective at what it does. At level 45 we pick up Tomat Tomatic Restoration. When a totem is replaced or destroyed before its duration expires naturally, its cooldown is reduced in proportion to the time lost up to a maximum of 50% of the full time. Fairly self-explanatory. Doesn't work quite so well with short totems that have I'm trying to find an example storm lash only lasts 10 seconds so you get like five seconds off your thing if i'm understanding it correctly at level 60 we pick up echo of the elements when one of your spell causes direct damage or healing you have a chance to gain echo of elements duplicating that spell's effect so lava burst you have a chance to generate a second lava burst. At level 75 we pick up a healing tide totem. This just gives you a little bit more versatility if you do happen to get in a group and it also allows you to get some healing on yourself if needed in the form of a totem to go along with your other heals. As for glyphs, we picked up glyph of thunder which reduces the cooldown of your thunderstorm by 10 seconds bringing it down to a 35 second cooldown. Glyph of Unstable Earth, and I'm being attacked. Well, this gives a perfect example of... Oh, I should use that. Oh, well. Of just how quickly you melt through enemies. And we'll pick up a carrot, or melon, or whatever. Back to my, my wanting to jump off the world. Anyway, Glyph of Unstable Earth causes your Earthquake spell to also reduce movement speed. Uh... Wow. Reduce movement speed of affected targets by 45% for 3 seconds. And then last, Glyphotomatic Currents. Causes your lightning bolt to restore 2% of your maximum mana when it strikes an enemy. You possibly wouldn't need this, but it seemed like something good to get. And then Glyph of Water Strider is just nice for crossing water in your Ghost Wolf form. So let's move along to our passive abilities. So first we start off with Spiritual Insight, which increases your mana pool by 400%. I don't know if it's currently working or not. I remember reading something about it, but I don't quite remember. However, I don't know. I'll be honest. I can't find anything on it off the top of my head or uh, quick looking, so I cannot say. But next we have Rolling Thunder. When you deal damage with Lightning Bolt or Chain Lightning, while your Lightning Shield ability is active, you have a 60% chance to recover 2% of your mana and to generate an additional Lightning Shield charge, up to a maximum of 7 charges. You can then use your charges to use Earth Shock. I don't know if that's another actual passive ability or not. Perhaps it is, but that just lets you know what it is real quick. Next is your Mastery, which is Elemental Overload. 
grants a 38% chance for your elemental overload to occur. Elemental overload causes a lightning bolt, chain lightning, and lava burst spell you cast to trigger a second similar spell on the same target at no additional cost and causes 75% of the normal damage and no threat. I'm guessing this stacks with your... thing? I, I guess? So you can it... Maybe it can proc off of the proc? Procception? I don't know. Lava Surge. Your Flame Shock periodic damage ticks have a chance to reset the cooldown of your Lava Burst spell and cause your next Lava Burst spell to become an instant. It seems to pop up quite a bit and it's quite nice. Another one that I'm not going to attempt to slaughter. Whenever you have... Okay, yeah, this is what I was talking about a second ago. Whenever you have more than one charge of Lightning Shield active, your Shock spell can, will consume any surplus charges instantly dealing their total damage to the enemy target. Mm. Quite nifty. You have Elemental Precision, which grants hit equal to spirit on items. Elemental Oath grants 5% spell haste to all party members and raid members. And Elemental Focus. Whenever you land a non-periodic critical strike from fire, frost, or nature damage spells, you enter a clear casting state. Clear casting state reduces the mana cost of your next two spells or healing damaging spells or healing spells by 25% and increases damage dealt by 10% and increases single healing target ugh, single target healing done by 50%. Now this covers our passive talents that are related to elemental. Now we will be talking about the you know if this no, no, get back here. This isn't going to do anything. Come on. Come on, monkey. Come on. <laughs> you bastard. That's what you get for interrupting me. Now, die there. Ha. Alright, so now we're going to talk about the abilities that you have. And you might notice my bars look a little, little dry here. That's because in all honesty, the abilities that I didn't put on, I didn't see a use for. And there aren't many that I didn't throw up. But let's cover those that you will be needing to know about. So you have your weapon imbue, and you're going to want to put flame tongue weapon on it. Which imbues the shaman's weapon with fire, uh, increasing magical damage done by 7%. Each hit causes 9 to bleh. Based on weapon speed, not important to you at all. And when you unleash this with this, uh, your enhancement spell uh, deals about 5,000 fire damage to the target and increases the damage dealt by the shaman's next fire spell by 50%. Now you can either use this with your flame shock or with your lava burst, which was most likely the one you want to use it with. Uh, situationally, I guess if you just really need to slow something, you can use this. And if you just really want 5% extra damage taken off. Or if you want something to attack you. I don't, I don't know. I don't see a point in those. You do have your three healing spells that you can cast. Healing Rain, Healing Surge, and Chain Heal. Chain Heal now heals a total of four targets. Interesting. I didn't think it could... Hmm. Something new to me. You have your Spirit Walker Grace. Something you might use while leveling. Ghost Wolf, of course. Frost Shock. Meh. You have your Earthquake ability, which causes the Earth to tremble and deals minor, minor damage, but does stun the target, or stun targets within it. Knocking them down. Has a 10% chance to knock them down. And it slows them by 40% if you talented for, or glyph for it. You have your Thunderstorm ability, which you saw demonstrated a second ago, which does a pretty good knockback, does a minor amount of damage, and you can use this while stunned. You have your Unleash Elements, which is on a 15 second cooldown, and it just basically buffs up your weapon enhancements. Now let's get into your cream of your crop, your main abilities that you'll be using. Lightning Bolt is on a 1.8, I think it's on a 2 second cooldown, or cast time, 
but with haste, of course, it's lower. You have your flame shock, which you're going to want to apply so that your lava burst becomes a crit. Now, it deals a small amount of fire damage. It's on six second cooldown, which is shared with all your shocks. And it does about 10 damage every over about 25 seconds or so. Your lava burst is on a 1.36 second cooldown. It's 1.5 naturally. And it's on a 8 sec or excuse me, cast time. And is on a 8 second cooldown. And it does a lot, eh, it does a decent amount of damage. It's not comparative to, say, a Warlock's, um, what is it, Destruction Warlock's Chaos Bolt. But it still does a good amount of damage and it tends to come up as a free shot quite often. Then you have your Earth Shock, which you're going to want to use when you get five charges of your Lightning Shield. And last, you have your Chain Lightning, which can hit up to three total targets and is good for AoEing. Other than that, you could throw down your Searing Totem, and then you have your few Situational Totems. I'm just going to toss open the book real quick, and you can see some of the other things that I just, oh, wrong way, that I just kind of didn't feel like were necessary. I think I even have water walking. You do have all your water totems, which I have down there. You have your, and you can put all those on your bars too. I just don't feel the need to. Farsight Bloodlust is on my bar. And other than that, you got your air totems, which I guess you might want these on your bar. I just didn't feel for this demonstration that I needed them. Your earth totems, the same. Your earth elemental you might want. For oh shit moments, you do have your fire elemental. And you can glyph for this to remove the cooldown, or reduce the cooldown by 40%, which may be something that you want. Personally, I don't think so. And Hex, actually Hex is something. Oh, it is on my bar. Okay. Anyway, that covers it for Elemental Shamans. I'd like to thank you for watching, and encourage you to have a wonderful day. And if you feel that you like this video enough, please subscribe and enjoy the other videos that I will come up. By the way, I have no clue why I'm in Goonswarm, but yeah.